Welcome back. So we've just computed, in general, the cosine of, eh, let's say, arc sine, right? Because that's the same thing as sine inverse of x, no matter what x is. And we always got the square root of 1 minus x squared. Ah, so let's notice when I say no matter what x is, I mean no matter what x is in the doma domain of arc sine. So, for x in negative 1 to 1. Let's try to do the same thing, but let's try to do the opposite. Let's try to compute the sine of the inverse cosine of x. And let's start with a single example, uh, 5 thirteenths. So you'll notice here that I say for you. So before you go any farther in this video, I want you to make that computation. Pause this video, do it, and then we'll come together and talk. Well, this isn't a live format. You can talk to me if you want. I won't be able to hear you. Um, let's do the computation. So we'll do the exact same thing. We'll let theta be the inverse cosine of 5 thirds because... Well, right, cosine inverse of 5 over 3, 5 over 13, is an angle whose cosine is 5 over 13. So, let's just give it a name. Let's let theta be the name for that angle. Then I know what the cosine of that angle is. It's 5 over 13. I need to compute the sine of theta. And we'll do it two different ways. Uh, I'll do it algebraically, and then I'll do it geometrically. There's enough space here for both. So let's do it algebraically first. So I want to know sine of theta. Now I know uh, if I let s be equal to the sine of theta, so I don't have to write sine of theta so many times, then by the Pythagorean identity, I know that cosine of theta squared plus sine theta squared, get those parentheses correct so it doesn't look like I'm squaring the angle, is always equal to 1. So that means 5 over 13 quantity squared plus s squared is equal to 1. So um, from here it's like autopilot, solve this for s. So, do to do to do, do, s squared is equal to 1, which is 13 squared over 13 squared, minus 5 squared over 13 squared, equals 13 squared minus 5 squared over 13 squared. And you might look at this and say, well, 13 squared, that's a kind of a big number. I don't want to compute that square on your own, and you would be perfectly reasonable to complain about that. Uh, I assume that many of you who did this on your own, probably was added to a machine to compute 13 squared. But I'm going to, uh, instead of trying to do that, I'm going to rewrite this. This is a difference of squares in the numerator. I'll use the difference of squares formula to rewrite 13 squared minus 5 squared as 13 plus 5 times 13 minus 5 all over 13 squared. And you'll notice that I'm not expanding out the bottom that 13 squared. I'll just leave that as 13 squared until the end of the end of the problem. So let's try to write that out. 13 plus 5 is 18 times 13 minus 5. Oh gosh, that's 8 over 13 squared. Oh, nice. So, in fact, uh, you might be of the mind to say, well, 18 times 8, that's more reasonable to compute by hand. Uh, I'm going to be of the mindset that, well, I want to take the square root eventually anyway, so I need to, like, find perfect square factors. So let's just find perfect square factors. 18 is 9 times 2, I'll leave the 8 alone, divided by 13 squared. So that'll be 9 times 16 over 13 squared. Aha! That's handy. So that means that s squared is equal to 9 times 16 over 13 squared, so s is equal to plus or minus 
the square root of 9 times 16 over 13 squared. Well, now we're cooking. Uh, so, do you see any perfect squares underneath that square root? Yeah, it looks like I chose this problem so that you would only see perfect squares under that square root. So everything is going to simplify. 9 is the square root of 3. So the square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. I saw that plus or minus. I haven't explained that away yet. All over the square root of 13 squared is 13. So that's 3 times 4 is 12 over 13. So I avoided all the hard computation by doing harder algebra, I guess. Um, oh, plus or minus. Uh, but now let's deal with that plus or minus sign. So this theta is the inverse cosine of 5 over 3. So what's the range of inverse cosine? Well, it's quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. And this cosine has to be positive, so it looks like it has to be quadrant 1. This angle is in quadrant 1, and quadrant 1 sine is positive. Because theta is in quadrant 1. Sorry, quadrant 1. Sine of theta. Sine of theta must be plus 12 over 13, but remember, uh, that theta is the inverse cosine of 5 13, so sine of cosine inverse of 5 over 13 is equal to 12 over 13. Nice. So now let's try to do the same thing by using uh, the perspective of right triangle trigonometry. So I know that cosine of theta is 5 over 13. Well, I can encode that information in a triangle, can't I? I can draw this happy triangle with there's the angle theta. And I know that cosine of theta is 5 over 13. So that means adjacent over hypotenuse is 5 over 13. So adjacent over hypotenuse is 5 over 13. Now notice, um, I don't know for a fact that those two are the case. They could be double that, right? All I know is the ratio, but changing those by multiplying them both by 2 won't change any of the trig functions anyway, so I may as well assume it's 5 over 13. Trig functions won't know any different. All right, and I want to know the sine of theta. That will be opposite over hypotenuse. Well, I know how to do that, right? Opposite squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. So now you'll go opposite squared equals 13 squared minus 5 squared. And on the one hand, by the walk we did over here, you know that that will walk out to be 9 over 16. So that's what we got in that numerator. But I guess let's uh, not obsess with being clever and avoiding hard walk. Let's just do the hard walk. So off to the side, 13 times 13 is 3 times 3 is 9, 39, 130, that'll be 169 equals 169 minus 25, because that's 5 squared. I can now do the subtraction. 5, 9 minus 5 is 4, 6 minus 2 is 4, 144. So the opposite side will be the square root of 144. But 144, if you know your perfect squares, you'll recognize that that's 12 squared. So that's just 12. Uh, sorry, that's not the final answer. I shouldn't box that. So now sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse is 12 over 13. Same as we got before. Now, with that in mind, Let's try to compute the sine of the co inverse cosine of x for any x. Well, let's do it. So, here's the game. Let's let theta be the inverse cosine of x. Then I know that the cosine of theta is equal to x, and I also know that this angle theta is in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2, so sine theta is positive. Maybe it's equal to zero. It's not, but it could be. Yeah, it could be. Um, well, let's use the Pythagorean formula again. 
so by the Pythagorean identity. Spelling is very hard. Uh, I know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is always equal to 1. Ah, but what is uh, the cosine of theta? The cosine of theta is s. I will set sine theta to be s. So that will give me s squared plus c squared equals 1. I want to solve for s. Because I, I already know what cosine is. Oh, x. I already know what cosine is. Cosine is x. Let's try to solve that for us because I would like to know what sine of theta is. So s squared equals 1 minus x squared. So s is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. But let's remember this line. Theta is in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2, so sine of theta is positive. So sine couldn't be the negative option, it has to be the positive option. Therefore, the sine of the inverse cosine of any number x is always equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. And before we go up to the, uh, yeah, let's do it now. Let's go up to that front page, fill that in. So the sine of the inverse cosine of x is always the square root of 1 minus x squared. So, um, a thing to notice, those two things are the exact same. And that, I think, actually makes a little bit of sense. So one of them is asking, if you know what the sine of theta is, can you figure out what the cosine of theta is? That's what this formula is asking you to do. And yeah, you know exactly how to do it. In fact, if you think about the steps you would do to do that, and to do the opposite, to say if you know what the cosine of theta is, then what is the sine of theta? Those steps are the exact same steps. So you expect those formulas should be the same. Wonderful. So, um, the remaining thing in this set of notes is to try to do something similar, but what if you don't want to compute cosine of an inverse sine? What if you want to compute some trig function of some other trig function? What can you do? And we'll come back with that in just a moment. I'll get this video posted.